Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice differential equation. We have y times y prime equals e to the power y, and we're going to be solving for y values. In some cases, when solving differential equations, it's not possible to isolate y to get y by itself. Uh, in other words, you can't write y always as a function of x, or vice versa. But let's see if we can do it for this problem. We're also going to be checking the results from well, from alpha, as I almost always try to do. Especially if I can get it and from alpha doesn't, uh, then I would definitely proudly, proudly present my solution. So, how do you solve such an equation? First of all, if you think about the variation of these problems, like you, that, something that uses the second derivative, that would be a different story. Problems with the second derivative only, without the first derivative, are harder because you need to use substitution. Uh, so only certain cases can be solved. Uh, for example, if you had something like y double prime equals e to the y, I think this equation can be solved. And I believe I've done this problem a while ago. If I can find it, I will share with you, but I doubt it. I have too many videos on this channel, so it's kind of hard to find. Anyways, uh, in this scenario, you have to do something different, okay? But with, uh, and sometimes, let's say you had y double prime equals cosine y. I don't think we have a good solution for these kinds of equations. So most cases I tried with known functions, I couldn't get a nice solution from, from alpha, so I didn't even attempt. If you know of any examples of these types, like where you have the uh, y double prime uh, written as a function of y, uh, let us know in the comment section down below. So hopefully something with a good solution. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at this scenario where things are a lot easier. Why? Because of the presence of y prime and y, especially when they are together, that's definitely a good thing, right? So there's a couple of ways to go about solving this problem. I'll be presenting two methods and let's take a look at the first one. And one of the methods might be incomplete. So when I have a product like y and y prime, I'm always thinking about something uh, like this chain rule. So can I turn it into something like uh, the derivative of something uh, so that I, when I use the chain rule, this, this is what comes up? Possibly, right? Think about it. I could uh, probably write the left-hand side as, let me think. Where does y, y prime come from? Okay, what about the derivative of y squared? Think about it. How do you differentiate y squared? And you'll see in a little bit why I brought up y squared. To be able to differentiate something squared, you need to use the power rule, bring the two to the front and reduce the power so it becomes two y. But because y is a function of x, most of the time, right? Then you need to multiply by the derivative of y, which comes from the chain rule. We also call that the derivative of the inside. In other words, if you have cosine x squared, where cosine x is equal to y, then you would definitely bring the two to the front, write this as two times cosine x, but then, you would have to multiply by the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. Make sense? And this would be negative 2 sine x cosine x, which can also be written as negative sine 2x. That's a different story, so on and so forth. Anyways, so I wasn't, I couldn't get y y prime, but I, I got two times that, which is fine because we can always adjust constants. Why don't we just divide both sides by 2, and then you'll get the answer. Cool. So the left-hand side is the derivative of y squared divided by 2. I can also write this as follows. Half of y squared differentiated. What's the derivative of this? Of course, 2 is a constant. It's just going to stay the same. By the way, the derivative of 2 is 0, but it's only when it's added or subtracted. When it's a coefficient, it just stays. In other words, if you have something like a times f of x and differentiate this, you get a times the derivative of f. Make sense? Okay, so the constant stays like that. You can also use the product rule, but that's just longer. So I got this on the left-hand side, which is nice because it's the derivative of something. What about the right-hand side? Uh-oh, this is where we get stuck. You know why? Because I can really write e to the y as the derivative of something. That's the challenge. Make sense? But could I avoid that by maybe multiplying both sides by y prime? You can try that. So y, y prime equals e to the y. Then multiply both sides by y prime. Then you'll get a nonlinear differential equation. The right-hand side will be nice, 
but the left hand side I'm not exactly sure because yes you can get away with y y prime y prime comes from the derivative but where does the other y prime come from so I don't think this is gonna get anywhere that's why it's it's gonna be incomplete so let's go ahead and continue with the second method which is gonna be more fun okay great so here's what we're going to do. Obviously, the first method is brute force and probably unnecessarily complicated. There's no need to do it, but I still wanted to show you because in some cases it might work. So second method based on the separability of this equation. This is a separable differential equation. What does that mean? We can write y prime as dy over dx and then separate the variables x and y. We can multiply both sides by e to the power of negative y times dx, which gives us the following. y e to the negative y dy equals dx. Nice. Variables are separated. Everything is good to go. Now, how do we solve it? By integrating both sides. Because once we separate the variables, integration is super duper easy. I'm not saying all functions are easy to integrate. I'm just saying that if you have a separable equation, separate the variables. Okay, and you're like, uh oh, how do we integrate y times e to the power of negative y? Notice that, uh, that if you differentiate y constantly, you're going to get to zero. In other words, the derivative vanishes. It's an interesting word for disappears. So we can use the di method. What is the di method? Let's talk about it. Di method is basically d uh, stands for differential or derivative, i is integral. You use the di method where one of the functions can be turned into zero by differentiating. Usually it's a polynomial. But also some other cases can be used. So I'm going to put the y here. One function that is easy to der derive okay, or differentiate. And the other function should be easy to integrate. Of course, you can't always pick the easiest one because y is also easy to integrate. But integrating y constantly will increase the degree so that's not a good idea. Make sense? And integrating the e to the power of negative y with respect to y is not too hard. So let's differentiate y until we get to zero. Nice. And let's integrate e to the power of negative y. Again, this is not with respect to x, with respect to y. Notice that we have a dy here. So you're going to get negative e to the negative y from the derivative of negative one, a negative y. And one more time is going to disappear, makes the negative disappear. And now we're going to go ahead and put a plus minus sign here. Don't worry about the zero because it's kind of meaningless. That zero basically tells you where to stop. Make sense? And then we're going to put arrows like this, make connections, meaning that we're going to multiply across the diagonals. In other words, uh, integral of y e to the negative y dy can be written as negative y e to the negative y. And that negative comes from here, by the way. And then a minus sign brings another negative. But this time, this needs to be inside Wait a minute, this is not the integration. I, I got stuck with uv, okay, u dv. Uh, it's just gonna be minus that, which is e to the negative y. And of course we can put a constant, but guess what? We have the integral of dx on the right hand side, and I can just call that x plus c, okay? Now let's go ahead and set these equal to each other uh, and go from there. Negative y e to the negative y minus e to the negative y equals x plus c, as you can see, x is almost alone. We can subtract c from both sides, which is a constant, but it's hard to get y by itself. But we're going to try to do that, okay? Let me go ahead and take out negative e to the e, negative e to the negative y, and then we're going to multiply it by y plus 1 equals x plus c. Okay, now good old Lambert comes in, but how? That is the trick. First, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1 to put the negative uh -oh, on the other side. That's basically going to give us, actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do this instead. I want to multiply, I want to distribute the negative inside the parentheses, kind of like this. Can I multiply by this? Cool. Then I'll get negative e to the negative y times negative y minus 1 equals x plus c. And then I, want, I need a negative y minus 1 here because I do need t to the t, so I can apply Lambert's w function to get t. Uh-oh, come on, notability. So... We can go ahead and just apply it on both sides. So what I need to do now is divide both sides by e, and that'll do the trick. Because this will be e to the power of negative y minus 1. And then let me go ahead and write the negative y minus 1 first, because that's my t 
multiply by e to the power of negative y minus 1, and then that'll be x plus c divided by e. Awesome. Now, here's where we apply Lambert's w, okay? Let me leave some room here so I can fit the w nicely. So we're going to put a big giant w here and a big giant w here. And when you apply it here, this is your t times e to the t, so it's just going to be negative y minus 1, and this will be w of x plus c divided by e. Let's go ahead and add one to both sides, right? And then we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1. That's going to give you y equals negative w of x plus c over e minus 1. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha to see if Wolfram Alpha can get the same answer. Okay, ready, set, and go. Ta da da da. Yes, except it uses c sub 1 instead of c, which doesn't matter. No big deal. Same idea. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.